Hey guys, this is Dr. Hub. In case you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. This is a concise, well-crafted summary and it highlights only the important keywords. Extra pyramidal side effects. And this is about the antipsychotics. So first what we need to know is uh, typical antipsychotics. It has uh, a greater extra pyramidal side effects compared to that of the atypical antipsychotics. So what are the side effects? First is there is acute uh, dystonia. Acute dystonia means that there is a sudden contraction of the muscle group. So contraction of the muscle group is seen and the, that can include torticollis, trismus, uh, oculogyric crisis and sudden of the uprolling of the eye also can be seen. So uprolling of the eye can be seen. And earlier side effects, there are chances of the higher with uh, the parental root. So they have the earlier side effects and chances are higher. So higher chances with the parental root. Next, what is the treatment of acute dystonia? The treatment of acute dystonia is uh, there is a, a TOC is parental anticholinergic. The treatment of choice will be the parental anticholinergic. And there is also the, in case of acute dystonia, the other treatment would be the promethazine, which can be given IM. So promethazine. So promethazine, which can be given IM. Next, moving on to the acute uh, acanthasia. This is another side effect. So acute acanthasia, there is a sense of the restlessness. Restlessness is seen and is the most common side effect. MC, most common side effect. The treatment wise, it includes a beta blocker. There is beta blockers. That is the DOC. That is a drug of choice. Next, it includes the anticholinergics. Anticholinergics. As well as the BZDs. So BZDs, it stands for the benzodiazepines. So acute uh, acanthasia, there is a sense of restlessness. The most common side effects. And then looking at the management, there is the beta blockers anticholinergics as well as the benzodiazepines. Now moving on to the drug induced Parkinsonism. So here uh, there is a rigidity tremors as well as the presence of the bradykinesia. Now treatment wise the management is the anticholinergics. Now moving on to the tardive dyskinesia. So what is tardive dyskinesia? So tardive dyskinesia is a syndrome that uh, involves a, a group of hydrogenic. So it's a group of the hydrogenic uh, uh, movements. So hydrogenic movements are seen. Disorders, it is caused by the blockade of the dopamine receptors. So dopamine uh, receptors, if you see, it is blocked. And the blockade of the dopamine receptors, the movement uh, disorders include the acanthasia, the dystonia, so dystonia you have, then the buccolingual uh, stereotypy, there is a myoclonus, myoclonus, then there is also the chorea, next is the ticks are also seen, there is abnormal involuntary movements, so abnormal involuntary movements can also be seen, so which are commonly caused by the long term use of the typical antipsychotics, so by the typical antipsychotics. So and however several other medications are also associated with the TD, there is a tardive dyskinesia. Next, moving on to the treatment of the tardive dyskinesia. So here it is the switching of typical to atypical drug therapy. So you switch from typical to atypical drug therapy and dopamine depleters uh, such as uh, the tetrabenazine can be used. Tetrabenazine, this is used. Next, moving on, there is uh, something known as the neuroleptic malignant syndrome. So neuroleptic malignant syndrome, there will be temperature which is elevated, elevated temperature, then comes the rigidity of the muscles, the increased creatine kinase and the myoglobin urea that can cause the ARF. So increased uh, CK, that is creatine kinase as well as the myoglobinemia, myoglobin urea and that can cause the ARF. Next is moving with uh, the management, there is uh, the dantrolene the dantrolene that is the dopamine agonist so management will be by dantrolene that is a dopamine agonist then comes amantadine dantrolene and then the dopamine agonist such as amantadine and the bromocryptine so amantadine 
and the bromocryptin. The other side effects, it includes endocrine side effects. What are the endocrine side effects? So here under the endocrine, it can increase the prolactin levels. Prolactin levels can be increased. Then the galactoria, the gynecomastia, the breast tenderness can also be seen. Then moving on to the most common in case of typical and uh, typical is uh, looking at MC most common. The typical can be greater than that of the atypical. But the risperidone and the amyl so amyl sulpride so you have the risperidone so risperidone and the amisulpride so risperidone and amisulpride it is a typical antipsychotic they are associated with a more endocrine side effects the more endocrine sc that is a side effects next when you look at the metabolic side effects it includes the weight gain msc metabolic side effects here is presence of the weight gain then there is dyslipidemia this uh, lipidemia so weight gain there is presence of dyslipidemia. Uh, next, there can also be the dyslipidemia is uh, atypical greater than typical. Then clozapine. The clozapine is uh, atypical antipsychotics is associated with the maximum weight gain. And there is a minimum EPS, extrapyramidal side effects, and also the anti-suicidal properties. To learn and grow daily like this, please do subscribe.